Hi there, I'm Robin Miller, and I'm going to review with you today some things about how to write a musical soundtrack with no previous musical experience. I hope you'll be able to use the knowledge. I've got some basic guidelines. I don't know if you'll be able to use them. I think that humans really respond innately to repetition. Visually, I think we also respond to repetition. I think this is uh, pertinent to every art form in whatever you're working on. Keep it as simple as possible. Don't let a lot of noise get in the way. A lot of musicians, myself included, tend to cling to music theory when we're writing. Those rules are comfortable. And it's easy to cling to those rules and allow those things to dictate where we're going to go next. I think it's important to kind of ignore those things, to set them aside when you're uh, jumping into any composition. Try to write as intuitively as possible. And lastly, but most importantly, it's all about telling the story. Okay, the first question, what's happening? Here's our main character, obviously upset. General despair, darkness. And then part two, we'll call this, um, interviews, the mood changes. I happen to know uh, um, that a fair amount of action has led up to this scene. And uh, let's just say I've talked to the director. And he's explained to me that he wants this scene to be something of a, a breath between what's come before. But it should also serve as a prelude to the action that's about to follow. That's what I have to write. Let's go back to the beginning. I feel that we want some sort of unexpected contrast for the sake of um, tension. Um, I'll create a nice um, wash of this noisy discord. So we have this beautiful scenery, but these tones tell us that something is not right. I'll point out here that I've just started uh, playing something without specifically choosing a key. I usually start fairly early on with a piano. So this piano will serve as a sort of theme. I might change the instrument later on, I don't know, or it may, I may keep it as a piano. It's still fairly simple, but it will probably be one of the most complex things I'll play. Two notes, the lower note never changes. Part two, the piano changes pretty dramatically. To document his story, and this was a, you know, a turn that he had taken. I can't answer, I can't. Uh... I'm very happy with the piano theme, um, but I do think I need to add some rhythm because I do feel like the entire track should have a sort of a subdued violence um, in a way. Um, I feel like Augustus himself has that going on in his character. Okay, this second rhythm will play more sporadically where we cut the particular shots. Let's see how it's sounding so far. my ear, there's a few places that are missing a low register piano. Uh, those low piano notes are harsh and have these dark overtones. And I'm going to reverse them like this. I like the way these uh, dark piano sounds um, ramp up to certain cuts. Part of writing any music is to sit back and carefully just listen to what's tonally needed. I'm hearing we need something on the high end. 
the high synth sort of mirrors the piano. I think it's time to seriously address the midpoint of the piece. This part of the piece should be all about his emotional state at that moment, which is pretty confused, I think, angry, um, a little chaotic. So how can we express that? The first thing I'm doing is adding this sound as Augustus leans over the suitcase, and it's really just noise. There's no tonal, nothing tonal at all. My singing voice is lab tested awful, but when I'm composing, sometimes I'll sing to myself uh, what I think a track will need. That's how I came up with this string part. That sort of bending down of a note is a little unstable. The tremolo afterwards also has a, uh, an unstable quality to it. These bells remind me of like a music box, which has unsettling sonic connotations. And then we go to an electric bass, which is actually just a sample of an electric bass. And it's this note repeated over and over, and it just builds louder and louder as we move through this little section. At this point, we're going to add some more drums. Um, I know I said keep it simple. Um, my argument would be that this, the overall composition is actually relatively simple. And then, lastly, with the drums, we have an electric guitar. You may be thinking, why didn't he use a real electric guitar? Or, you know, a real bass? Yeah, I just really love the freedom of electronic instruments because I can play them and immediately change them and adjust them and the whole studio is at my fingertips. It's a very direct way to compose. We haven't paid much attention to part two. Essentially at this point the piano defines part two. We were so we need to give it a, li a little bit more tonally. To document his story. First, I'm going to add strings, you know, and I will play while I watch I the film, I can't, uh, um, listening carefully to the dialogue say whether and listening to the piano. Crew should intervene in the life of... I have bells in the track, and I can hear a use for those bells at the end of part two. And then I'll add a bass, sort of round, long notes. And then the last thing uh, that I will add is this airy sound to introduce part two and kind of push it into the background, very low in volume, sort of a breath to divide parts one and two. Okay, I think we're ready to listen. Thank you. 
were trying to document his story, and this was a you know a turn that he had taken. I can't answer. I can't. I can't confidently say whether a documentary film crew should intervene in the life of somebody else. Uh, While the crew, I think, was still sort of um, seeing the project as ultimately a work of entertainment, um, you know, it it ended up obviously having real life effects. All right, now that we've listened, let's quickly review. There's a lot of repeating patterns within the piece. The piano, the drums, the bass, some of these synthesizers. And again, I feel we innately respond to this kind of repetition. It's true we've used a lot of tracks, 14 tracks. The piece itself is relatively minimal. Overall, I still consider it to be a simple, minimal sound. There's not a lot of complexity going on. This is music, so obviously this piece is governed by musical theory, but it's part of my workflow to ignore that before beginning. There is a key listening back. There's some layered timings. Toward the end of the piece in part two, I'm not really playing in any specific timing at all. It was just an improvised section where I completely ignored any kind of timing. The most difficult part of writing something like this is just sitting back, carefully listening, and watching the film, and then intuitively deciding what it requires, emotionally and sonically. This really is everything. This piece exists to support the story, and for no other reason. And if this isn't working, if my piece that I've written works against the grain of the story, or it gets in the way, then I should probably just start over, which might be hard for me to accept but it's probably what I should do. All right, thanks for tuning in, and good night.